Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here with my uh, pile of possibilities, uh, as we should say, for Aussie April. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Sarah, it's already April. What are you doing? Uh, I, I'm late, but I'm late because I kept adding and removing, adding and removing, and kind of wrestling with this list of books. But I think I finally arrived at a reasonable uh, list that I that I think I'm going to try to read for April. Uh, so Aussie April, if you don't know, is something that Doris from All New Books and Jacqueline from Six Minutes from Me have put together. And it's I had so much fun doing it last year. It was an absolute delight. And I found so many amazing books that I absolutely love now, uh, including Jane Harper. And I binged through her entire oeuvre that are available, and I'm just waiting for her to publish something else. Um, so I have no Jane Harper in this list, but I have some new-to-me authors uh, that I'm very excited to get to. And I think this is going to, I think this list is doable. I wanted to whittle it down to kind of essentials, only because, uh, number one, I'm going to be continuing on uh, uh, reviewing and judging for the Book 2 Prize, uh, Round 2. So I have a list of fiction books I need to read this month and next month. And then the other reason is, uh, I think, like many people have acknowledged, it's really hard to read right now, despite the fact that this should be our sweet spot where we're all uh, home and no, no social commitments and we're just here and we can just focus on reading. Uh, in essence, it's really challenging me um, and I'm not always able to read the books that I think I'm going to be able to read. So I didn't want to go too overboard. I wanted to keep the list simple and a little pared back. But I think I have a really nice mix of books. So let me share with you what I'm what I think I'm going to be reading. You know, again, not a TBR because I can't be trusted to keep them, but more of a pile of possibilities. So this one I've already started. You may have seen this in my week of reading. Uh, this week. It's The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. And this, I don't even know where I found it. Maybe the Stella Prize. I don't know very much about this book other than uh, when I flipped through, I saw it's just these gorgeous line drawings that looked remarkable. So we've got a, an abusive father. We've got a young nine-year-old who's very precocious and uh, defiant, and I, I'm here for it. So I can't wait to see what happens with this book. Uh, so currently reading this. Uh, then I went, at my last trip to London in November, went to Scoo, which is a used bookstore, and fell in love with all of their Virago Modern classics, and found this one. This is Christina Steed, Miss Herbert, The Suburban Wife. I uh, just oh, love this cover. Uh, this is about uh, a beautiful English woman uh, who wants to be a wife and mother, but before she does that, she kind of has this um, this promiscuity spurt, I guess, uh, where she could just kind of goes loose on the streets of London. Uh, so I'm really interested in, in reading this uh, and seeing what, what it's all about. Uh, Christina Steed is a uh, Australian-born writer, and I really like the Virago Modern Classic editions, so looking forward to, to jumping into that. Then uh, an Australian author who, that was up for the Stella Prize that I actually saw speak at East Bay Booksellers here in Oakland is uh, Maria Tamarkin. This is Axiomatic. And I absolutely was fascinated with her. This is nonfiction, uh, and this really talks about trauma and talks about empathy and grief. And one of the things that she said when she spoke was that this idea of uh, closure is completely ridiculous. There isn't closure. There's something else. Uh, doesn't mean that you you it lives with you all the time, but there but it never closes. These wounds don't necessarily heal up, and so she takes a look at that concept of trauma through multiple lenses, and 
like I said, I was incredibly impressed with her and and how how she thinks and how she communicates. It was a really great interview, so I'm looking forward to getting into this. And then I'm going to be doing a buddy read with Greg of Supposedly Fun of this one later on in the month. This is Tim Winton's Cloud Street. This is the modern Australian classic. And this is a family saga. And it has been so long since I've read a family saga. They don't always um, do well with me. I'm not always a family saga type gal. Uh, but this sounds exactly like what I need now. So we'll be reading this um, very, very shortly. And it'll be our first buddy read. So very excited by that. And then the other book that I might be reading uh, is I, I've had it and I just have been waiting for for Aussie April. And that is the very well-known uh, darling of, of book two, Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. So I haven't read it yet. I'm looking forward to jumping into that. I might jump into that uh, depending on, I'm not sure when, uh, sometime this month. So that's it. I'll put a link to the explanations that Doris and Jacqueline do of what they're trying to accomplish with um, with this year's Aussie April and the hashtags and all of those good, good things. Uh, and I appreciate they're keeping it really light and simple this year, which is quite lovely. So that's it for me. I would love to know, uh, have you read any of these books? Have you any suggestions for me uh, of Australian books that you think I would especially like? I would love to know that. And other than that, please stay safe, uh, stay indoors, don't touch your face. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.